Okay, hello Leo, how are you doing? I hope you are good and well, okay? How are you feeling? How is life treating you? Is it a good day? Is it a shit day? They come and go. There's always opportunity for a shift. Let's dive in, okay? Because your, your energy is interesting, your reading's interesting. If you do re resonate, please hit like, feel free to subscribe, comment down below if you would like, okay? Straight away, I'm looking at a really interesting energy when it comes to a monk and a nun energy. Now I'm going to dive in before I say too much because I feel like there's more I need to know. It's about your love life. It's about a relationship. So this is heavy because we've got a few relationship cards coming out here. I can see that um, you, you're recently single, just come out of a relationship, yeah? Listen to this. First of all, there's a monk or nun, a spiritual relationship, a spiritual connection. You've been some with someone who's been like a priest or a leader, a spiritual advocate, right? But now this person has been burnt and it's burnt your relationship because whatever happened in this connection, there was ancestral issues related to abandonment, Issues with mother and father, issues with materialism, finance and wealth, discontentment in the home, awareness of not being as confident as you could be in the relationship to deal with conflicts that arose, limitations in your throat chakra versus your intuition in this relationship, tower moments in this relationship every time that money crumbled to the ground, Issues about your mother or being trapped as a mother and either way you persevering and you having moderate memories of the past now. You know when you first break up all you think about is that person all the time and you know why you broke up. You actually hate their guts now but the truth of the matter is you think about them all the time so you can't stop and then it becomes unbearable and then maybe you should forgive them and maybe we should get back together and maybe it wasn't that bad but you ended for a reason. When the, when the trigger and the issue shows itself accept it, look at it, deal with it, and stick with that decision. You've done that now, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but we all typically go through that cycle because we all have hearts and we all have feelings and no one wants to be alone. So we go through it again and again and again, the cycles of abuse and toxicity, hoping things will change. And then what happens? They never do. And then we get so burnt out, drained, lose our sense of self, walk away, it can't go on. Praise God that I'm still here and that I'm healing next. What's happening now, separate to that relationship, and it was related to spirituality heavy. So whatever relationship that was, there's something I'm not saying. Hold on. Ah, interesting. Pride. Ego and pride. The relationship you've just left behind is rooted in ego and pride. You learning lessons about lessons and blessings about what is and isn't worth dealing with in a relationship um accepting who you are in a relationship when we're anywhere up until about 25 25 to 27 any relationship we get in under the age of 27 in my opinions we're still really really young we're still really learning we want to look the best we can so we're gonna slap on as much makeup as we can this is me you could be totally different but and this is from a female standpoint because i'm connecting with a female so let me know if i'm wrong i like to be proven wrong as much as possible because it opens my perspective yeah i don't need to be right but either way slap on a load of makeup push my tits up really really high sexiest outfit i can find gonna cook the best food i possibly can for you i'm gonna serve it to you on a golden platter i'm gonna make myself irresistible i'm gonna put on all these airs and graces i'm gonna do whatever i can to be the most perfect gorgeous version of me i can because i don't want to ever feel like you don't want me. I, I'm scared that you might not want me one day. Or I don't want you to not like me anymore while we're in the dating phase. So I've got to keep giving. This is the cycle I feel all of us women go through. We keep giving, 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 giving. Because, and we're giving from a place of, I don't want this to ever be unrequited. I want this to work out. I want to get to the next phase of this relationship. So I'm going to keep giving and giving from a place of, please don't make this unrequited one day. Do you get what I mean? This is a recent epiphany and revelation for me as well. So with this kind of card, unrequited love. So it's nice to be able to share my experiences with you as well. Because I am a professional of unrequited love. Yeah, I might do a master's in it or something. I might get my doctorate in 
<laughs> Unrequited love, I think. I think I would pass with flying fucking colours. Ah! Right, okay, sorry not to be negative, sorry. But that's what it feels like sometimes in relationships. But the positive about your reading, right, where I can make a joke like that and turn it around, is because this is a reward for you. This is success. Your unrequited love is followed by birds of birds of prey. Oh my god, I love it. Birds of prey. Have you seen Birds of Prey with um this Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad is her first spin-off series. So this is potentially your first spin-off series in your life without being connected to this spiritual union and relationship. It looks like you've broken away from someone specifically, but if you're still listening and there's no one you've broken away from recently, you're breaking links with old spiritual beliefs and ties because now you've got a new belief system or you're letting go of pride in finance and wealth, pride in spirituality, pride in looks and appearance, pride in some sense of yourself that you only had for that person you were with. I want to say that masculine specifically because there's a lot of masculine feminine cards here and I see I'm connecting with a female energy, female Leo, who has just gone on a Harley Quinn journey. Remember how obsessed Harley Quinn was with the Joker? And then what did he do to her? How many times did he toss her off to the skip? treat her like shit nearly kill her and then she comes back loves him again finally birds of the prey this is the first time harley quinn's got her own show without the joker she's the star you're the star of your own reality now now you've got your own crew the crazy crew you've got with you as well they look really cool if you haven't got them yet you've got a weird crew oh my god this is what happened to me in my life right listen this is exactly what you're going to go through okay so just embrace it it's great you wake up right and then you look around and you're, I'm 35, it's my 35 example that I give to everyone. Um, you're 35 and you realise all your family, all your friends, the whole network you had in the past has gone, your spiritual beliefs change, your financial standings change, you need to build a whole new fucking life and reality. Who have I got left that I truly love, who is truly ringing with my heart and soul, who is truly part of my soul tribe left now? You look around and you've only got crazy fuckers left. Wait, hold on. They're crazy fuckers just like you that's so rude if this is one of my people i love you and you know i love you but i'm a i'm a crazy fucker and i've looked around and i'm like oh this person has not left my side since i had a breakdown lost all my family blew up all my social media accounts and had to start again he's been my ride or die has not left my side we've got 10 years apart in age nothing like me but they were what was similar is we love each other to the core and we have so much flexibility in conversation, healing, vibration, love, positivity. He's an amazing asset in my life. He makes my heart work better. I can tell him anything. I haven't got a fake who I am. I've got other friends who I'm not gonna go into, but they do crazy spiritual out there stuff, right? And in 10 years ago, you would think, no way would I be around someone like that. No way would I even believe in that. No way would I be engaging with that. From your family and friends and your besties from back in the day and those that were closest to you, you're now like, shit, this is who I am. Because when you look at your soul tribe, even if there's only two or three or four of them left, they're really reflective of you. And you can talk to them about some serious kind of out there issues that are on your mind because they're kin. You found kin. This is where you really start in my eyes. I've still got a long way to go, so I'm still learning. I've started from scratch again and rebuilt my whole life. So my, me starting from kin, I've got a few, but they're not who I expected them to be at all, and I love them more than anyone else on the planet. And they kept me alive at points where I was suicidal and down and out and wanted to leave this plane. So, goodness me, you have some really valuable players in your life. Three of them I see around you, and those relationships are going to last you for the rest of your life. Everyone says when you get to 35, you lose all the ones, you, you lose everyone because they would go off on their own destined path. And then not you've found at least three reliables that are going to be with you until you die in day, until you're old and grey, that you can rely on. Beautiful, amazing. And you're a bachelorette as well, so you're looking newly single as well. I don't think you're rushing to date or diving into anything, but I do see strength and resilience in that. I see ways forward for you to get your sexy back sounds cheesy but it came to my head so i'll say it i'm bringing sexy back mm, all of that goodness that good energy is rising up in you as well because you're coming from a place of um where this strain was a new beginning 
maybe it's only one month that you've kind of really been separated and it's it's dawning on you now or there's one month significant one year one month either way it's one and you're intuitively intuitively for maybe for one year or for one month you was in a really dark place or it's strain straining on you but now you're shifting you're working really hard on your career you're making your checks and balances add up your money's looking good yeah you're making things add up in your mind you're getting clear you're up to something intuitive high priestess in you is getting stronger that's epic that's that's oh high priestess energy can save your life sometimes i'll tell you that much when you've got nothing else and you're down and out and you're coming out of a heavy breakup like you have with spirituality attached to it high priestess sometimes is all you've got people will lie to you to your face tell you anything that you want to hear make you believe a load of bullshit and the truth of the matter is your intuition was right all along the random voice that the clinical professional would tell you was was not there and not real don't listen to it you're going crazy take some pills for it was actually the truest voice two three and four months down the line and it actually comes true and you're like oh shit everyone else lied to me but look it's true now now everyone's apologizing oh i didn't mean it oh i didn't mean it oh i didn't mean to lie but you did lie you weren't honest and my intuition told me my higher self told me and i didn't want to believe you i believed you over my higher self and i should have believed myself so yeah, that's a lesson for woman's intuition. Trust your fucking self above all else. And sometimes people in your life, separate to this new crew that you've got, are full of nothing but shit. And they'll lie to your face again and again and again and again and again. So sad to say it, but it's true. People in this world are horrible, horrible people. It's awful sometimes. Sometimes I've been through phases where I just wake up and I'm like, why? Why, why do I even have to exist in this reality when everyone around me is so awful? I can't find anyone who I could actually believe in and have faith in and have trust in, right? And I say that in a dramatic sense because I've already told you about the free, free, few friends that I do have that are actual kin. But when you try and process, oh, well, they're not around me all the time. They live far away. I can't see them all the time. They live in another country. You still look back at the old community you had and you think, if only one of them could have survived. If only that one of them showed true heart. And they didn't. They didn't. And that's just that's just a harsh way of you realizing what was and wasn't for you and it sucks sucks balls all these years on i'm still here and i still look back at my past like damn really none of you guys all of you look like look at me like i'm a piece of shit i'm worthless to all of you now because i choose not to be this way or i don't fit in with this person i've left all this community behind and i'm not i don't fit in with you guys anymore so you've just kicked me to the curb that kind of energy right it's a sign. It's a sign it wasn't meant for you in the first place. Yeah? And people are really fucking fickle. Really fucking fickle. They'll choose anything else. Clout, money, attention, whatever they can over a pure heart and a genuine conversation. So at the end of the day, we're going to dive into three cards that are staring at me that's got a story to tell a little bit more than this, okay? But I like the fact that you're coming through with unqui unrequited love energy in a powerful way. Because that's really nice. Like, I value your energy because, fuck, you know, it's been hard to get to a place where unrequited love doesn't make me have a breakdown and cry for years, you know? So there is obstacles coming, though, okay? So we're looking at abandonment that I just want to mention, okay? There are some abandonment issues that you're dealing with, and I feel like that was based on past. So I feel like your relationship came to an end, right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Please always disagree if you don't agree, right? But listen to this. I'm looking at a situation here, specifically, where, like I said, in the past, your relationship wasn't as truthful as it could have been because you was always holding out for, well, I don't want to be abandoned in this. At some point of the phase of you dating, first date, second date, I hope he calls, like it's, it's as simple as the vibration we give off, right? I hope he texts me back. I hope he calls me back. I hope he wants a second date. I hope he wants a third date. I hope he wants a fourth date. I hope for this. You're repeatedly in this, since the start of this relationship, tell me if I'm wrong, since the start of this relationship, you've been hoping for the next step. That means you've been giving your power away and saying, please don't let me be unrequited in this. Please give me a chance. That vibration rings out, yeah? And that's unconscious, so you don't realise it. And this, per this, this, this person, masculine, is going, fine, I'll reciprocate, fine, I'll reciprocate, fine, I'll reciprocate, just for the sake of it sometimes. That's harsh for me to say, but I'm saying that on both fronts where I see that for myself too. 
every relationship I've ever been in and my dating phases and when I'm questioning should I commit or should I not commit I'm always the one non-committal running away but there's this phase where I'm pushing for it and it's, it's, I'm fighting with the unrequitedness of it in your situation it's I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be orphaned off. I don't want to. I don't want to lose you. Like you, you, you could be quite clingy in a relationship, or a little bit bunny boilerish. I don't want to be harsh. Tell me if I'm wrong again. But that's kind of what the energy I get. I'm, I'm, I'm bunny, but bunny boiler crazy. I'll own it. That's my worst traits. I'm a bunny. Bo I'm a psycho. Let's just, just let's just move on from me. Let's focus on you, shall we? <laughs> um let's see oh gosh yeah it's just us we want to be loved we want to be appreciated we want to be valued valid valued and valid like be in a valid connection but if we give off please please i hope he texts me i hope he texts me and it's such a angst inside of you i hope that we get to go on another date i hope he liked the way i looked i hope he liked this it puts your mind in that place imagine what that's giving off in vibration and what the masculine's receiving from that and how he's choosing to reciprocate you know you gave your power away from really early on, I feel. And that's what I said, under the age of 27, that's what we kind of go through, right? If you're above that age, then you disregard that. But either way, your environment shifted now. You're moving towards destiny. Yeah. Money coming in rough for you, yeah? Okay. A little bit of discontent and boredom for a little while and conflict over money. But that's because you're not being confident and speaking up intuitively about your ideas and what you want to do. There's a tower moment coming in finance for you related to your child and being a mother and your responsibilities. Maybe it's a tower moment of... Oh, shit. Okay. It's just a little struggle, okay? So I feel like for the first time in your life, you're going to go through financial hardship or struggle. Know what it means to be independent on your own. And your living circumstances might need to change. Your leisure activities might need to change. You might need to be patient and kind with yourself. I think this is your biggest phobia too. So I'm just bringing up, if you are scared internally and you're going, oh my God, I'm going to be broke. Oh my God, I'm not going to be able to feed my kid. Oh my God, I'm going to be struggling. I'm not going to make no money at work. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be as financial, financially as stable as I was in the past. Then you're feeding that to the atmosphere. I'm going to be rich and abundant. If today's not great, tomorrow will be better. You're not going to be irrealistic about it but i'm telling you now you're smart and intelligent and you've got wits and wisdom and enough confidence to turn your dreams into reality so actively do it yeah you actually actively have to do it because there is something going on un in your sub in your uncon un ugh. something going on unconsciously yeah my gosh unconsciously something has been going on in regards to your heart in this relationship which you were suffering in silence you could have been married if you was in a marriage you were suffering in silence in this marriage you wasn't happy in this relationship a hundred percent and i think you could admit that to yourself now yeah karmic influences here as well so it's this is karmic completion here you're completing an old cycle. Spirit has saved you. You've got ancestors like loved one, like grandparents up there saying, hell yes, finally you're free. You can move on now. You can get what you... This was a wise lesson for you. You needed this to learn true lessons about love because you were deceived about what love was before because before you were needy and clingy and you was begging for them to reciprocate love with you. So you stayed in and begged to be reciprocated. Love me, love me. I'll be what you need. What, what is it that you like? I'll be it. Let me show up in a way that will be satisfying for you so you never leave me. Where doing that has only built up more resentment in the other person because they've just... I, I can't really discuss the masculine. I can't really see that masculine vibration. But I can see stereo, my, my own stereotypes. I've got to be careful not to just throw stereotypes on all men because I can easily do that with my bitter vibration. I can easily go... You know, men, men, are, men are fickle, right? From my experience of being cheated on in the past multiple times i'm a professional 
muppet in relationships so from my experience it's a situation of when you're clingy and over giving a bunny boiler and you choose to make sure you this is not i don't want this to be unrequited so i'm going to give what more do you need oh do i look sexy enough today i'll be sexy next week i'll do this we're saying that in our head or i'm saying that in my head to my masculine right then he's he's kind of bored of me he's been bored of me but i'm still giving i don't want to lose him so i'm trying more and more to keep him on the hook because i don't want to be single and i want to be with you want me please so then it turns into bullshit then he's cheating on the side lying to my face i'm acting like i'm still in love because now i'm just infatuated and bunny boiling the fuck out of the connection because i need it to last i don't want to be alone again you said you love me you said we're together do you get what I mean? And this is our inner child. This is the orphan in us. This is the child inner child that didn't see enough healthy relationships growing up or was abandoned by mother and father in the home at some point. I didn't have a healthy, stable um, relationship to see and serve as healthy role models. So your domestic harmony of just giving and giving and that, that being enough in love was not never enough. But you put that to the back of your mind and you're unconscious. You made that a shadow issue because it was easier. You just held out hope that it would be enough. And you're even more of a beautiful divine feminine for putting yourself out there like that and taking that risk. Because that's what we do. And we have to go through it to know. Otherwise, we don't learn to mature in relationships. So now you have a real chance of being in a real healthy relationship. You might need counselling mediation mediators um waiting for a contract to end waiting for some time to dial down waiting to unblock someone waiting to have a conversation there's time on the clock basically i'm looking at a time and i'm looking at like marriage boot camp energy so it looks like there's got to be therapy counseling serious conversations at least healing for you personally because if you've left this relationship, it's unhealthy and toxic. And it involves being a mother to children, being in a family, being going through divorce, separation, moving house, now financially struggling as well, trying to work multiple jobs, have multiple um, businesses, build your own craft, do whatever you're doing. Either way, there's a struggle here because, firstly, you need therapy and a healthy outlet to talk about what you're going through. Even if you've got friends, you still need an outlet. Go to therapy and counselling because you've been in something that was unhealthy or just not right for you at the time. So you've got to heal from that. So counselling, you can get free counselling through um, NHS IAPT. IAPT. Um, just write in with your local borough if you are from UK. In America, I don't know what Obamacare does, but you can look into free therapy Obamacare. I'm sure they must have something. If they don't, let me know and I will harass someone in America to open up some services because everyone deserves free mental health and um, um, well-being support just to keep your mind resilient. If you can afford therapy, go and um, pay for it. But it's so expensive right now from what I can tell, especially in London. It's... oh through the roof for a therapy session for one hour it's ridiculous but you do need to be able to um create your own therapy use tarot use oracle decks then um try and listen to um healthy stuff i don't know i don't know john moyer jason stevenson's meditations kareki meditations whatever it is for you hell i would say healthy tarot readers but i don't really know many on the platform to be honest a lot of the shit's unhealthy and not a lot of them are talking about your mental health and your consciousness and your heart they're talking about he done this and he done that and then uh, too much gossipy i've told you about your own life and i tried to focus on you and i hate gossip and I hate the fact that sometimes I even have a reading that talks about another person that isn't you because I don't want to increase the gossip vibration and I don't want to lead you down a path and promote shit that we don't need because all you need is to know self a little bit more and get validation or clarity on something that you already see for yourself because you are the truest clear in the environment when it comes to you. You've got clear senses, you're using them every now. Now and then and you've come to this channel for a reason, right? So yeah, self-love coming out with that. You need to get some therapy for some more self-love, some more healing for you. Because uh, for sure, you're not going to go back into another relationship trying to be what you were in the past. Hell no. 
any relationship you have forward, the person is going to have to put in some real good work and you can be exactly who you are. But you don't want to go into a new relationship jaded, being closed off, saying, no, they're going to have to do all the work, which means even more work than they would normally have to do if you weren't jaded. So you've got to think about what is the healthy balance for me? What is the healthy balance for me? How do I love again in healthy measure? Because I'm single now, I can do what I want. And I'm not going to be a bubbling boiler and I'm not going to give off the energy to the environment. Not saying that you are, but give off the energy to the environment where I'm like, oh my God, I need reciprocation. I hope they call me back. If they call me back, they call me back. If they don't, they don't. If that was good, that was good. If it wasn't, it wasn't next. Yeah? Light. How can we get you to be so in love with yourself that you're as light as a feather and whatever's meant for you will come to you and not pass you by and you won't need to make that effort and force a relationship or connection with anyone else. Yeah? And the stuff I've said to you, it feels a little bit harsh because I don't know you and I'm just going, Barney Boiler, which is so annoying. If someone done that to me, I would go fucking bananas. But I'm saying it in regards to... From my point of view and my perspective of what I've seen on the cards, a lot of women under the age of 27 in relationships, from time you get into a relationship from a younger age, even if you're 40 now, yeah, even 50 now, if you got into that relationship from under the age of 27, then you would have, that relationship would have started to be programmed from a maturer version of you. A, a, a part of you that was probably unhealed if he was in that relationship before you knew tarot and oracle cards and spirituality of a totally different to the spiritual beliefs you have now then that was an earlier version of you that started to build the framework for that relationship so if you weren't both building healthy pieces of self independently into your union then you were just creating Play, play spaces for random alternatives and moods and shifts and nothing groundable. It, your relationship wasn't grounded enough because you weren't mature enough then. Yeah? And I want to say, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I don't know enough people, to be honest, that have had a relationship from school days that have come out of school. I know loads of people that have come out of school and got into relationships and settled down, but I don't know any of them that really at the core have also had spirituality integrated and really know themselves. This is the rudest thing I'm gonna say, but I assume these people wouldn't watch my channel. Muggles can come out or can date from year seven yeah like 11 12 years old fall in love at 13 fall in love at 15 get married at 18 and spend the rest of their lives together because they're muggles some people are wizards some people go to hogwarts if you relate to being a hogwarts student instead of a muggle then you would understand a ho a, a, a hogwarts student's journey is going to be very different a wizard a light worker, an empath, a clear sentient, a clear voyant, a clear audience being. We evolve again and again. We go through all these shifts in our mind. We ascend. We study consciousness. That's not in line with everyday reality. That's not something muggles do. The muggle life is get into a relationship and just be a provider on a really status quo, basic level and live a linear life till the end of time. And a lot of people who go on the spiritual journey eventually reach a pivotal point in their relationship that if they started in the muggle realm in a relationship, they eventually break out of it because it can't be... It, the muggle vibration cannot withstand the sorcery that you're bringing in. And then it shows you who you really are. Waking up ain't cute. Spirituality ain't cute. Being a light worker ain't cute because you wake up again and again. You become a higher version of self. So you have to have reciprocal vibrations and other people in relationships who are too evolving at that rate. You start seeking and wanting more. In Harry Potter, I'm a big Harry Potter nerd. The last thing I'm going to say, just to add context a little more to this, how many seasons were the muggles in it? Harry Potter's um, aunt and uncle. There's like seven Harry Potter movies. They only made it to the first three. Then life got really serious, didn't it? And Harry was fighting all over the place. It was full on wizard wars. Do you get what I mean? That's what we're all going through. Silly to say it like that, but that's the case. So any muggle relationship that's faded away and gone now is because it can't withstand your wizardry, your craft, your spirituality. The medicine man, medicine woman, alchemical alchemist that you are now. 
has got to a point where you must stand alone in love and light and be your destined true self study self even more so you can begin to attract attract more of your soul tribe because now you've broken and cocooned into who you're truly destined to be thanks to the relationship that you were in as well because every relationship is a blessing and a lesson yeah so i hope that finds you well sending you love and light and healing i didn't get you a chakra so let's quickly do that chakra and morale i think the chakras are good or you're not interested in chakras let's see okay hold on okay confidence that's all the only thing here is my professional path develops in keeping with my life plan that's a big thing we spoke about didn't we and then we spoke about your worries and concerns about um your money and your finances and managing the jobs i saw i saw entrepreneurships i saw loads of little jobs on the table loads of little things that you do right so with that in mind you have to excel spreadsheets your best friend powerpoints are your best friend stay on top of your money what's going in and out understand return on investment start watching youtube channels about business and money management and marketing strategies and um making money as an influencer or making money as an entrepreneur they were all in the same kind of sector whatever community you're in whatever you're doing don't niche down too tightly as well understand we all need a niche but understand if you lock in on a niche you limit your market space especially if you're listening to me at 30 minutes and 55 seconds you're not an everyday basic motherfucker because i talk high level spiritual stuff so if you're here and you're engaging with my verbiage it means that you're a higher level spiritualist and you know a lot of stuff so don't limit yourself you can go wider on the net and sell your stuff and products and ideas to a wider range of mar wider market and you haven't got to be limited to a certain level of spirituality i broke free of spiritual limitation instead of just being a small tarot reader because i knew it was going to be a um a blocked cage if that makes sense. I was never going to get to where I needed to be financially. So go wide, open up, take a risk, think, think long term on your business plan and then go quarter to quarter, month to month, see what you can achieve. Set yourself a goal for six months, a goal for three months and then level it up like that. Okay. I did say I'm going to come back and do some entrepreneur readings for you guys as well because um, I've done a reading already and it was about this kind of stuff you might want to go back a few days and see if that's out yet if not there's something else coming out on this channel that's going to be for you so do hit like and subscribe and I'll be back soon with more bye